Hi, my name's Lachlan Wilmot. I'm the strength and power coach here at the GWS Giants. Contact time strong, but also landing position strong. Welcome, my name's Lachlan Wilmot. I'm the strength and power coach here at the GWS Giants. In our last video series, we started to look at plyometric training and how we can use that to minimize injuries in our athletes, using a foundation of landing and active positioning to allow our athletes to get the most out of their plyometric training. What we're gonna start doing now is looking at how we can use that in the gym environment, and in particular, look at what we refer to as contrast training. Contrast training is basically what we look at when we do a heavy movement with a plyometric movement. And what we try and activate within that is what is known as post-activation potentiation, which is effectively also known as PAP, but we try and look at how we can start to utilize our nervous system to stimulate greater jump heights and more force output. So today, Katie's gonna take us through a back squat coupled with a counter movement jump. And what we're looking to do here is couple a maximum output in vertical force with the squat and our plyometric option, which is also with vertical force, of the counter movement jump. Now you don't have to program like this, but it's a really nice way to couple force outputs to make sure we're trying to stimulate the same musculature. So when we do horizontal work, we can couple them together, which you'll start to see in future episodes. But for today, we're gonna to stick to just the vertical side. So a squat with a counter movement jump and see if we can't stimulate a little bit more height and better contact time for Katie. So as you can see, Katie's set up here for a back squat. Ideally, we wanna use a fairly maximum load, so it does take a little bit of a warm up to get her ready, but today we're gonna to use a three RM, and then we're gonna move over to the jump mat over here and try and do a continuous counter movement jump. Yet again, we're gonna use three reps of this as well. With the squat, we're gonna to look to try and charge that nervous system so we can move straight onto the jump mat and apply as much force as possible. Now, a lot of the research out there tends to look at three to five minute breaks between our heavy movement and our plyometric movement. In a gym setting, especially with athletes, if you're under time, three to five minutes is gonna be way too long to be sitting around within an environment where you may only have one hour with your athlete. So what we tend to do is we shorten that rest period and we go directly into it. Now it may not be as effective as if we had three to five minutes, but we still get a good bang for our buck and that's what we're gonna try and do today. So if Katie's ready to go, she's gonna give a beautiful demonstration of our 3RM, get that nervous system fired up, and then she's gonna move over and we're gonna look at our contact time for her continuous jumping. In your own time, Katie, let's do your best job. Strong foot position, nice controlled movement, nice and strong up through. Good, accelerate out of that bottom. Well done, knees out. Really smooth. Re-racking the bar. Good. So she's charged her nervous system now. Now we'll move over to our plyometric component and see if we can't stimulate a little bit more jump height. So you'll notice the feedback here will be our contact time. We want to get below 200 milliseconds and her jump height, we want to get above 30 centimetres. So she'll hit green when her contact time's good. She'll hit blue when her height's good. Good. So you can see here, all of her contacts were under 200 milliseconds and her jump height was always over 30 centimetres. So what we can start to do with that information is challenge her a little bit more. We can start to creep that jump height a little bit. So she has to be challenged to get 32, 34, 36, whatever it might be. And we can also start to challenge that contact time if we like. But the idea is, as her back squat improves, we can charge that nervous system a little bit more and then we can start to utilise the plyometric component. So hopefully you've gotten a little bit of a takeaway from this today and something you can use with your athletes, making sure that they've done all the proper grounding in their foundation work from our previous videos. But if you wanna jump onto the Fusion website to find out more or subscribe to their YouTube channel, feel free to.